We will be running the synthesis of the pyrillium uh, tetrafluoro tetrafluoroborate salt and for this uh, we have prepared a setup uh, here uh, with a 5 liter uh, reaction uh, round bottom reaction vessel. Uh, we're going to be using uh, a whole 4 liter bottle of acetic anhydride as a solvent and uh, uh, reagent to which we'll be adding um, the 4 hydroxy 4 methyl uh, uh, to pantanone, uh, half a liter of it, and uh, later we'll be adding the last reagent, uh, the tetrafluoroboronic acid. So for now, we're going to be adding just the whole bottle. Fun over the business one. Now, with the acetic and hydride, we're going to be adding uh, uh, one of the reagents under stirring. The 4 hydroxy 4 uh, methyl pentanone. Uh, ideally, this should be added under stirring over a period of about 5 minutes during which the uh, temperature might increase a bit. We're going to slowly add this and then come back with the adding the, the other reagent. Now the pentanone has been added and uh, we're ready to add the <coughs> tetrafluoroboronic acid. Um, the addition of the tetrafluoroboronic acid is going to lead to an exothermic reaction, so the addition needs to be done very slowly and carefully. Uh, I'm going to start adding dropwise, and within a few minutes, uh, as you can see from the first drops, uh, the color immediately changes to yellow and vapors uh, are formed. It's important to leave the reaction mixture um, open to the atmosphere because, uh, uh, and in a uh, well vented environment because uh, Acetic acid will slowly be uh, generated and uh, refluxed in this uh, reaction. Eventually, the temperature of the mixture will reach 90 degrees, at which point, uh, the, and this temperature is necessary for the reaction to occur to completion. And we're going to let this uh, slow wrapwise addition continue and try to uh, regulate it so it's being added over about two hours. If, uh, the color is going to darken to some brown and eventually um, some solids are going to form, but that's going to be visible later on. We've been adding uh, the acid for about two minutes now and the color is you can see it's red we're gonna let uh, the temperature of the mixture is already significantly cold approaching 90 degrees um, and we're gonna let this continue and come back later addition of the uh, fluoroboronic acid solution uh, has been has finished it took about two hours uh, during that time, the mixture warmed up, uh, reached about 90 degrees. Uh, the color changed initially to yellow from red and now it's a deep brown. Uh, the solution is still warm and we're going to let it uh, cool down slowly overnight under heavy stirring. During this time, some uh, off-white precipitate is going to crash out and once it cools down, we're going to collect that uh, precipitate uh, as the 
uh, pyrrhonium salt of BF4. Uh, welcome back. Uh, the reaction mixture had been, has been stirring uh, overnight uh, during which uh, it cooled down. I turned up the stirring uh, some time ago and uh, you can see the liquid being dark brown and on the bottom uh, the pyrrhonium salt has accumulated and we're going to collect that uh, uh, crystalline solid in this uh, filtration funnel. This liquid is mostly acetic acid and acetic anhydride, so it's important to be careful uh, not to get into trouble. Once we're going to finish collecting the solids, we're going to wash them with uh, some, uh, uh, something like six to eight liters of uh, diethyl ether to remove all the acid traces. And um, once we do that, we should have a, an off-white uh, crystalline solid that we can use for the next step. So right now we filtered all the solids and we're washing it with uh, diethyl ether. Uh, the filtrate is going to be pale yellow uh, at the end and we're going to wash it with about 8 liters of ether to get the, all the acid traces out of, out of it, out of the solids. And um, at the end we'll, we'll have just uh, some off-white uh, solids that we're gonna collect, dry and collect and use it in the next step. Back for the second step of the there's butyl analyte ligand synthesis. Uh, today we're gonna use the pyrrhonium salt we isolated in the previous step and uh, run a reaction uh, with tersbutyl amine to generate the uh, aryl uh, tersbutyl amine. So we're gonna run the reaction in a large vessel, a polypropylene vessel. Uh, this is a five gallon uh, at the end of the reaction mixture we might have something like two gallons of uh, liquid so we need a big container we're going to use a large stir bar for this volume uh, two in, two in and for this particular batch we're going to use the half a kilogram of pyrrhonium salt we previously uh, synthesized with a whole liter of tersbutalamine Now, uh, just we're gonna dilute this uh, tersbutylamine with 200 milliliters of uh, escanida. And we're not gonna add the, the pyrrhonium salt directly. We're gonna add it, but very slowly. Just to make sure that it looks good. Okay. So, uh, uh, here on this uh, stir plate, I have uh, the pyrrhonium salt stirring in acetonitrile. We're gonna prepare uh, saturated solutions of this. And uh, these saturated solutions, we're gonna add them slowly to the amine uh, acetonitrile solution. So, right now, we 
we're going to slowly start the addition drop wise so the addition should be really slow uh, we're planning to add this uh, liter for about an hour the slower the addition is the higher the yield and the mixture is going to slowly turn color over the course of the addition and we're going to just let it run and uh, understand for, uh, until we finish with this batch and we're going to add the other batches and hopefully over a few hours the addition will be complete. To the aniline synthesis, uh, we've uh, finished adding the uh, three, three, start again. Finished uh, with the synthesis of the aniline uh, ligand. Uh, the uh, beryllium salt was added slowly and then we left it stir overnight, uh, let the mixture stir overnight. During this time, uh, uh, the mixture darkened and uh, acquired the red color. Now uh, we're gonna slowly uh, remove the solvent and concentrate these almost uh, eight liters of uh, liquid to about a liter, and then extract the desired product. Uh, and uh, let's see. Uh, we concentrate the mean solution to about a liter. It looks uh, like a oily brown-red solid. But leaving overnight uh, generates some sol uh, some crystals that we're gonna try to separate. And uh, the way we're gonna do the separation is just uh, water petroleumether extraction. Um, and uh, we're gonna try to run this uh, whole liter in about three batches. So we're gonna take about a third of it. We're going to extract it with uh, something like 800 milliliters water and uh, petroleumeter. So we're going to let these two phases separate. The bottom one is the aqueous layer, which we're going to collect uh, in this cellular mire flask. And then separately, we're going to collect the petroleum ether on top, and then uh, uh, wash the water aqueous layer several times with petroleum ether, uh, specifically three more times. And uh, all those petroleum ether fractions will be combined and concentrated again and uh, made ready for distillation. Uh, we're done with the extraction and we've concentrated the liquid to about 3 liters. Overnight some of the solvent uh, uh, evaporated further. What we're going to do now with this uh, about 2 liter flask is going to, we're going to add magnesium sulfate to remove the last traces of water.